Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about the latest and greatest in gaming and tech news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on Windows, Linux, and Mac with Panda 3DS. And Panda 3DS just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.2 beta is the latest update, and they're calling this one preview release number two, Gaming Edition. As for what's changed, or rather, as for what's improved, they say much better compatibility due to lots of emulation fixes. Graphics fixes, proper-ish screens, performance fixes, better user experience, hotkey support, drag and drop, and more. Optional Discord RPC, Mac OS app bundles, and sort of working Linux builds this time, and more. If you are curious about Panda 3DS and wanted to see it in action, I'll drop a link to their official YouTube channel in the description below in this video. It shows Luigi's Mansion up and running on it. Panda 3DS is 100% free. It's open source and it's still fairly new to the scene. The first release of this one was back at the beginning of July, so not too long ago. It's amazing to see new emulators out there and amazing to see new emulators doing so well. Let me know your thoughts about Panda 3DS in the comments below. And speaking about doing well, next up we're talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with RPCSX. Although RPCSX is also very new to this scene, they keep getting breakthrough after breakthrough for this one. Recently they booted a couple of games and then Sonic Mania was playable. And the other day they got audio working and now they've added in gamepad support. So if you want to listen to the beautiful sounds of Sonic Mania coming from RPCSX and also see a controller in action, I'll drop a link to Brutal Sam's YouTube video in the description below. And I do recommend checking it out. What's next for RPCSX is apparently a GUI. This development team is working quick. Next up, if you want to play NES games in probably a way you've never played before, you may want to check out 3D Sen, which just released version 0.9.7. This allows you to play NES games in 3D voxel format. 3D Sen has been out for a while. It's available on Steam, and they just added in profiles for Blaster Master and Super Spike Volleyball. Drop a link to it in the description below. Moving on, and we're talking about a ROM hack, and you can probably chalk this one up under weird. It's called Mega Momon Fire Red in version 1.4 just released. So if you haven't guessed already, it's a ROM hack of Pokemon Fire Red on the Game Boy Advance, and they've replaced all of the Pokemon with very interesting characters. It kind of reminds me of those mascots people were making for emulators. Anyways, there's over 600 of these Momon. There's a fairy type, mega evolution, new areas, expanded moves, reusable TMs, and even more. If you're interested in this ROM hack, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Moving on, and we're talking about Baldur's Gate 3, and this game has been incredibly popular since it was released. If we take a look on SteamDB, right now it says there are 462,048 people currently playing. And that's second under Counter-Strike Global Offensive. In 24 hours here, it was also ranked second with 667,496 people playing. And the all-time peak, all-time, is also very impressive. It's sitting right now at number 9 on the list, right under Hogwarts Legacy. If you've played Baldur's Gate 3, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below, and truth be told, I'm glad it's doing so well. It doesn't share the same money-grabbing strategy that a lot of AAA games have nowadays. It's not necessarily designed to bleed you dry, at least not in my opinion. And I'm just hoping here that it doesn't share the same fate as Capcom Arcade Stadium, which did great but has kind of fallen off a cliff. And speaking about money, next up we're talking about Diablo 4, and Diablo 4 recently disabled trading, and this was due to a pretty bad or pretty awesome item and gold duplication exploit. They stopped trading to stop this stuff and patched it out with version 1.1.2, which just released. So if you were looking to duplicate some golden items with the exploit, you no longer can. And they are monitoring accounts, so be careful if you were doing that stuff. Next up, we're talking about a very interesting statement from Running With Scissors, the studio behind the Postal series. They say, remember folks, just because we support piracy of our games, doesn't mean we're telling you to pirate games from other indie companies. 
Also, we don't tell you how or where to pirate our games. You have to do it at your own risk. Safe downloads and please consider supporting us. If a company like Nintendo had an evil twin, or if Nintendo was the evil twin, in my opinion, that twin would be running with scissors. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. And if you played Postal 4, let me know in the comments below. And last up here, we're talking about a couple of brand new Linux releases. The first one here is Dev1 Daedalus 5.0. If you don't like System D, and if you like Wayland without eLogin D, this might be a release for you. It's based on Debian Bookworm 12 with a Linux kernel of 6.1. And 9to5Linux noticed there's a brand new release of Open Mandriva Rome, which is their rolling release. It's 23.08, it contains Linux kernel 6.4, KDE Plasma 5.27.7, MESA 23.2, and more. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Or I guess, one fluff. Anyways, we talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.